see uh, Kane Gardner, top right hand of your screen, carrying a bit of bruising around the left side of the eye, presumably from yesterday's quarter final. Just lands the first jab. Gardner's keeping his head a moving target. He swung himself off balance just then. Swung himself off balance and eight turn. Nice clean counter left hook from Hadri Shurik. down there was caught on the top of the head. Good head movement from Gardner trying to box his way into range, a little bit shorter of the two men. Referee goes away with Hadri Shura there. off the back foot for the most part, doing the right thing really, bringing Gardner on to him, but Gardner's moving pretty well, his defence isn't bad, he's not with picking his shots, Gardner's been evading the majority of them. He just drops the shoulder to left and right, keeps the head moving just at all times, and the guard's nice and high as well, boxes himself into range, and as I say John, nice, high, tight guard, Kane Gardner. So shaping up nicely this one. Good clean work from both men. Sure, able to land that left hook too cleanly, apart from that one. The first of the 30 seconds of the contest. And this one, much more like the, the old amateur style competition. More of a sort of a pick and move point scoring type bout neither one winding up particularly with their shots and i like boxing like this you know, picking a moment scoring a point thinking about defense thinking about what your opponent's doing Now Straw feels like he's got to take the lead a bit more. He's setting off after Gardner. I feel Gardner sort of wants Straw to come forward, and he's been extremely patient with his tactics in that opening three minutes. There wasn't a lot to pick between them. No, Straw's work from range was good. Seems to have good control as well, but... Neither man's breathing particularly heavily in the corner. I think they both have plenty left in the tank for the next two rounds. Yeah, it wasn't a particularly high tempo in terms of output from either man. A lot of punches really thrown compared to some of the bouts we've seen this afternoon but uh, as we've also seen in some of the quieter early contests the action can soon heat up and well shot landed here or there can really change the game and turn a nice technical contest into uh, sort of descending into into some sort of chaos but hopefully not with these two men as Hadri Shur gets back behind the jab in the center of the ring and Gardner just moving around him. It was a nice shot to the body from Shrew. Yeah, he just picked that out from long range, didn't he? Not easy to do. No, nope, not easy to leave with the backhand to the body as well and land that clean and get out without taking anything in reply. Absolutely, very, very hard. It's a long, long way to go. Oh, that was a nice combination for him, Hadri Shrew. Showing a little bit more variety in his arsenal at the beginning of this second round.
Castro landed a nice left hook, right hand combination. Really nice boxing. Gardner now just walking him down with a little bit more urgency as this one progresses. Just knows he's been caught, knows he's got to try and even the score up in the judges' minds. Box is weighing off that jab, but the jab of Schroer is really keeping him at bay. He's throwing some very long range, spiteful combinations and getting out of range as quickly as he's come into it. This is really impressive stuff from. Tonsberg man. Oh, that's a lovely combination. Just a well schooled technical boxer, isn't he? It really is, yeah. It was the timing of that hook more than anything else that just prodded Gardner into the ropes. The way Gardner moves, he certainly doesn't make himself a man that's easy to hit clean. So the fact oh. that Andy Schreuer has been able to do so is impressive in its own right. He's looking relaxed as this second round draws to a close. Oh, another nice combination, just pushes Gardner back onto his heels. It's really only when Strew misses, those are the times that he looks vulnerable. So I guess that's what Khan has got to do in the last round, make him miss and then make him pay when those all too few openings appear. So some well-schooled young boxers coming out of the Tonsberg team in Norway. You see there Kane Gardner. That's... Uh, Swelling around that left eye is well, it's got much worse, but certainly not got any better. And uh, well, he's got a little bit of work to do in this third and final round. left hook over the jab of Gardner from Hadri Stewart. It's been Stewart's lead left. It's been winning the battle of the jabs. And the rest of Stewart's work has been flowing off that. They all say, don't they? A good jab sets everything else up. And, uh, this is textbook evidence of that from Hadi Shrew. And now the showboating from Shrew comes in. Now his hands have. Perhaps there is a relation to the others. <laughs> Has he, though? A bit more disciplined. Oh, spiteful. Two hooks to the body, but uh, Gardner took them, gritted his teeth, and not sure what he said to him. You're backing him on. Just trying to show he was all right. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's again another clean right hand lead to the body from Schroer. And now begins the showboating in the movement. Oh, that's the lead left hook from him. And Gardner trying to put some pressure on the man in red as he backed him onto the ropes. He hasn't been, been able to pin him on there enough though, John. No, there was only that brief moment we saw what Gardner really could have done with more, you know, needed to be doing more. He hasn't been able to really 
puts Straw under too much pressure on the ropes, just a hint of what he's capable of doing. I think he's been a little bit of a negative uh, performance from Garn. Do you think perhaps being on the back foot a little bit too much could have done with pressing the action more, or how do you see that? It's, yeah, it's a hard one to say, really, mate. It seemed like he's almost doing the right thing because he hasn't been shipping too many shots, but it's just as the belt got away from him. Maybe he needed to change his approach in the third round. A lot of blood coming from the side of the head of uh, Hadi Sraw. It's not immediately apparent where it's coming from, so somewhere on the top of the head, perhaps. I can't imagine it's going to cause too many problems. It's, uh, it must be right on the top of his head. Yeah, it must be, yeah. Uh, he says it's okay. And I think uh, he's keen to go on, isn't he? Of course he is, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think he probably is ahead in this, and he doesn't want to hinder his chances at all. Ken Garnett looks very pumped up. Kane Gardner's had it talking from his corner in that recess to say you've got to go and make something of this and well comes to a close and nice smiles from both of the boxers as they head over to their respective corners show their respects to each other's teams and a really competent performance from another of the Shrewers from Tonsberg. Kane Gardner did himself no disservice there against a very well skilled tall rangy and very awkward opponent. So the big question, who's your favourite Struer? Oh, there's just too many. <laughs> We've got four to choose from, have we? Ask me again after the finals. You're a consummate pro. Thanks. You can't play favourites. I suppose an uh, international experience of, uh, of sorts for Kane Gardner. So we see uh, Hadi Shrewer's coach there. Comparisons with uh, perhaps younger Freddie Roach. He's the Tongsburg Freddie Roach, we assume. I wonder if he's heard that before. Right, we will go to the result. No surprises there then. As Andy Shrewer progresses through to the final, another of the Shrewers and a really successful show from Tonsberg in Norway as the boxers pose there for their coach. It's really nice sportsmanship to see because it can't be easy to lose in the semi-final of a competition like this. But Kane Gardner's shown it's a real example there for some of the younger guys and girls watching ringside.